Okay, we are going to begin with part three of the barber haircutting chapter. Um, this is where we left off. So hair thinning and texturizing. Hair thinning is used to reduce the bulk or weight of the hair. With serrated shears, hair parting is combed and held between the index and middle finger. Slicing and carving are two methods that are used to remove bulk with regular shears. So some barbers prefer to thin the, share, the, the hair with regular shears using a slicing method or a carving method. Um, but it's okay if you want to do hair um, thinning shears too. And um, just if you're reading along, we are, we are on page 410 of your Milady Barbering book. Okay. Slithering. Slithering is a thin parting of the hair that's held between the fingers. Removing weight from the ends helps to taper or tighten the perimeter of graduated and blunt haircuts. Point cutting or notching with regular shears is used to reduce the weight in, and ends in the ends of the hair. Um, so sometimes when you're cutting, it's nice if somebody has really, really straight hair and you don't want to see the lines, you can kind of point cut into those ends and it makes the hair blend better. Flat tops. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about basic haircut styles. So classic cuts and variations. So flat tops are very short on the sides and back area. They're slightly longer um, hair at the upper and periodal and front sections and flat top sections. So flat tops, just think of a square. Just make a square on their head, on their head. but um, like it says, make sure to leave the kind of the bang area, the front, um, of the top a little bit longer so it doesn't look curved. You want it to look very square. Crew cuts are short or semi-short or medium tapered side and back lengths with the top section that increases in length from crown to front hairline. So again, a little bit longer in the front and um, on page 412 and 413, there are some um, illustrations of these cuts. Um, there's a flat top, there is a crew cut, there is a close fade, and a tapered cut. So the crew cuts, um, the back and sides are cut kind of high um, to the bottom of the crest area. The back and sides are tapered and blended to the crest and top sections. Um, so this, some people could say this is kind of a low fade, but it's it's not real short. I mean, it's short on top, but it's not as short as a close fade would be. So a crew cut is is a, a shorter haircut, and um, you have a lot of tapering and a little fading going on there too. Um, so brush or bush cuts are there's very it's it's like a variation of the crew cut. Um, high and tight cuts are cuts that are cut extremely close or shaved on the sides and back um, to level at the bottom midpoint or top of the parietal ridge. And then there's the fade style. The hair is longest in the top section and gradually fades down to nothing at the hairline. And that's the one that people might say they want a low fade, a medium fade, a high fade. Um, there's a lot of different variations of the fade style. Um, but I'll talk a little bit about it. So the fade style derives its name from the fact that the hair is longest in the top section and gradually fades down to nothing at the hairline. Like the high and tight cut, the back and sides are cut extremely close or shaved with the hair becoming gradually longer at the periodal ridge and longest at the top. Like other basic styles discussed, there are many variations of fades that can be performed on a variety of hair texture. Okay, so you're going to want to cut the top section to the desired length, cut the nape up to the occipital bone to the desired length, which would be bald or maybe barely shadowed. Um, the parietal ridge is the transition area between the sides and top sections. Most of the blending and close tapering occurs in this area. And then just be guided by the natural hair growth patterns to avoid creating gaps and patches.
Here's a picture of the tapered cut. So this is a classic cut. Um, it's well blended. It's a graduated cut that conforms to the head shape. Um, this might be just called a regular men's cut. Some people will call it a business men's cut, an Ivy League cut, a Princeton cut, a precision cut, or a regular men's cut, like I said. So um, this is where the consultation comes in because people have different names for their haircut and you might not be familiar with the Ivy League cut. Um, most people wouldn't be, but also depending on the person's age, Sometimes they used to call things um, different than what the younger generations call them today. So make sure to ask questions if you're not sure. So this is another classic cut. Um, this is a pompadour in the picture. Um, so you have precision cut tapers, it's variation and cutting techniques rather than style description. Um, and then this picture is the classic pompadour, medium to long taper cut with a long top section. We have the classic Caesar style cut with the shears to create a short uniform layers um, from one to two inches throughout the head form. And usually the Caesar style, they'll comb the bangs down. And then we have something called the Quo Vadis. It's a uniformly cut style. Clippers are used to achieve its close, even all over length. And there's a picture of this on page 415. Um, so the Quovatis is another uniformly cut style. However, clippers are used to achieve its close, even all over length. This haircut style, which generally is suitable for most hair textures, conforms to the contours of the head and produces a more uniformly consistent appearance, meaning it's almost all the same length, um, mostly. Um, and um, the follow, um, okay, that's all I'm gonna say about that one. The neck shave is shaving the sides of the neck and across the nape with a razor. So remember, the neck shave is only the back of the neck. Um, it's the sides of the neck and across the nape. So you're not doing the sideburns in a neck shave. It's just the neck. So the sides of the neck and across the nape with the razor is a neck shave. The outline shave starts at the bottom of the sideburns, arches around and behind the ears, down the sides of the neck, and across the nape. So the outline shave is, um, you know, like it says there, sideburns above and behind the ears, in the sides of the neck and the nape, but a neck shave is just the sides of the neck and across the nape. Um, and then we have eyebrow trimming. That is the combination of techniques that is used depending on the length and density of the brow hair. Um, trimming excess nostril and ear hair. Outliners with the T-shaped blade are used or um, nose hair trimmers are the safest tools to use. Um, I don't recommend, this is just me, I don't recommend um, nose waxing or nostril waxing. Um, it's just uh, an invitation for infection, but I won't go into that. That's up to you. Head shaving. So hair and scalp are prepared with hot towels and lather followed by a straight razor shaving. Analyze scalp to identify moles and hypertrophies. Uh, keep the scalp mo moist and stretching hand dry. Stretch the skin to create a smooth shaving surface. Um, something that I recommend if you're gonna shave the head with a straight razor is shave it first with a zero um, or even a, uh, a coil um, shaver, because this way you can see if they have moles or parts of the skin that dip or um, extend. Um, it's and it plus it just makes it easier for you too. Basic styling techniques. Okay, so natural drying. The hair is left to dry naturally, so you're not going to be using any blow drying. Finger styling. Use fingers to manipulate the hair in place instead of a comb or brush. So finger styling, you're using your fingers to push the hair, but you're still going to be using a blow dryer. You just don't use a comb or a brush. Scrunch styling. 
is a form of finger styling used on wavy to curly hair patterns with enough length to create a tasseled look. So that's just how it sounds. You're just scrunching the hair up. Finger waving is a wet styling technique shaping and directing the hair into S patterns using the finger and comb and styling lotion. So that takes some skill. That's something you could practice in the classroom or watch YouTube videos if you can't go to the classroom right now. Um, blow dry styling, drying and styling damp hair in one operation. Okay, so now there's free form blow drying, which don't get that confused with natural um, drying. This could be a test question. So once again, natural drying, the hair is left to dry naturally with no blow dryer and free form blow drying is a quick easy method of drying the client's hair what that means free form blow drying you might have re um, heard it referred to as rough drying it's where you're just kind of kind of tossing the hair back and forth and you're blowing it dry but you're not using combs and you're just letting it be um in a little bit more of a natural state, but you're still using a blow dryer, so it's called free form blow drying. And then there's stylized blow drying that creates a more finished appearance. Um, you're gonna, with stylized blow drying, you're gonna be styling it, so you're probably gonna be using combs or brushes. Um, and then there's diffuse drying to maintain a natural wave pattern of hair. That's where you put a diffuser on the hair and you, you actually kind of lift the hair with the diffuser as it's drying to keep it curly. Um, there's extra volume may be needed in the crown, crest, or top areas to create a more proportionate look. You don't want it to be flat on the top. To build volume or create even contour, use a blow dryer and brush. So that could be called like a round brushing technique. So we're going to talk about braids and locks. So we have on scalp cornrows. That's what the guy um, has in the picture. Um, they are one of the most popular styles worn today. Cornrows require working close to the scalp and across curves of the head. So you see how they curve? They curve with the head. We have locks. So that's dreadlocks. They're created from natural textured hair intertwined together to form a single network of hair. And then hair locking is coiled hair allowed to develop in its natural state without the use of combs, heat, or chemicals? And there are pictures. There is pictures of rolling the hair for locking it um, on page 421. So safety precautions, it's your responsibility as a barber to practice safety precautions daily in the performance of your work. And we are going to stop here. And this concludes the chapter of haircutting.